Hello and welcome back to another video of Company of Heroes 2. This video is going to be a bit different from the previous videos I made. Um, in this video I'm not gonna play the game. I don't have an opponent and um, I'm going uh, instead I'm going to talk about uh, the units of the various armies and um, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, what is this unit actually uh, what was it in real life uh, a bit about the historical background how they were used and also uh, what is realistic about this unit in Company of Heroes 2 and what is not um, the game itself, the developers have uh, never stated that they wanted to make this uh, historically accurate. Um, but uh, you would be surprised at uh, things th that are in this game that actually are uh, historically accurate. And maybe uh, you can pick up a thing or two by watching this video. Today we start with the Wehrmacht, the German army. Um, in game it's also called, called the Ostheer. It's supposed to represent the German army at Ready. the Eastern Front. So uh, the earliest units are from 1941 and the latest from 1945. Most units are representing the late war uh, abilities. And I'm starting with the starting unit of the Wehrmacht. It's the Pioneer Squad. In German it's called Pioniere. They are engineers. Their task is to um, build stuff and uh, to demolish stuff especially. And as you can see they are uh, a four-man squad. Uh, about the numbers. All squads in Company of Heroes have lesser numbers than in reality. Uh, real uh, numbers are more uh, uh, going into 10 or 9 members of a uh, Gruppe, what it was called. There were, f uh, 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 there were four Gruppen in a Zug. And a Zug is actually uh, des uh, designed around a certain task. So in the early war you had Schützenzugs and um, later you uh, would see a grenadier zuge and because we have grenadiers in uh, company of heroes 2 i assume that that would be the realistic zug and therefore also the realistic gruppen a group in a grenadier zug would have nine members and uh, as you can see here the four members of the engineer squad are all armed with an uh, MP40, the Maschinenpistole 40. And that's uh, the successor of the MP38, which was used in early war. And uh, the 40, the 40, is um, the year they started producing this one. And, um, well, it's, uh, it's a submachine gun. And what is realistic about this is that this was a weapon that was widely used in World War II. And what's not realistic about it, it that is that in one group there would be a maximum of two guys with a, a submachine gun. And uh, units were not equipped uh, entirely with submachine guns. Um, on the helmets you can see there are uh, glasses and uh, they might have to do with the construction. Uh, maybe they were meant for welding um, because a welding mask is a bit heavy to carry around. Um, and uh, the only other thing that these glasses were used for uh, is when um, the infantry was uh, riding motorcycles. Well, because the engineers are not riding motorcycles, I assume it has something to do with the uh, welding or something. You can see on the back, uh, especially this guy here in the front, uh, he has uh, cutting scissors. It's for cutting barbed wire. It's um, because in World War I there was a lot of barbed wire at the front and um, the German army uh, wanted to break through those using scissors 
and um, the best thing uh, to do that is uh, these cutting scissors. Uh, what else can we see here? The uh, Stahlhelm, which is the regular helmet in the German army. Uh, the uniform is Feldgrau. Uh, there are more var variations, but uh, this looks quite realistic. Uh, what's not so realistic is that they all have pistol holsters here. And pistols were there for the uh, NCOs, the non-commissioned officers in the army. Um, well, uh, they carry around large backpacks, of course, with explosives uh, to blow up obstacles. And uh, the, the pioneers can construct various things. And as you can see here, they can build a bunker. Uh, in, in game, they can only build uh, wooden bunkers if you don't have the commander for the concrete bunkers. And they can build barbed wire. They can lay mines also anti-personnel mines, the S-mine the S-mine S mine. Um, the S -mine would uh, trigger if you would step on the little uh, the little thingy sticking out on the top and the teller mine, there were the various types of teller mines the first one was the teller mine 35 and later in the war at the end in the final years you could see the teller mine 43 being laid this one looks like the Telemine 43 and it has a, a handle so you can carry it around. Then you had to dig it in uh, after screwing the top on, which is the small circle in the picture here, this one. Um, the mines were designed in a way that if uh, pressure was uh, executed on them, then the mine would explode. And finally, they can build sandbags. Well, this concludes uh, the story about the engineers. And that brings us to the uh, second unit of the uh, units that you can build in the headquarters building. This is an MG squad. And the MG squad is uh, carrying a heavy MG, as you can see here. Um, what's realistic about this is that there actually were heavy MGs in the German army like this. And uh, what's not so realistic is that there are four guys in this squad. There should be three. One for carrying the machine gun, one for carrying the uh, uh, tripod, and one for carrying the ammunition. Uh, as soon as the heavy machine gun would arrive somewhere, they would set it up, Moving. which works like this. Let's okay. Let's set it up, boys. Okay. Right now, the heavy machine gun is set up, and uh, as you can see, the other three guys are just hanging around a bit. And uh, they are uh, also carrying machine pistole 40, which I was talking about earlier in the Pioneer. Um, the heavy machine gun uh, crew was actually consisting of three guys, like I said before. Uh, one was the gunner. Well, that's obvious, that's this guy. Then one of these two would uh, stand next to the gun and feed it ammo. Because as you can see here, the ammo is in a box. That's realistic, because the bullets of the MG42, the Maschinengewehr 42, uh, was actually in a box. What's not realistic is that the box is attached to the gun, as you can see here. Because that would mess up the aim of the gunner. Because that would be quite heavy. These boxes contain lots and lots of bullets, because the Maschinengewehr 42 could fire up to 600 rounds per minute, which was one of the fastest firing, if not the fastest firing machine gun in World War II. Uh, it also became pretty infamous because, because of that. Whenever Allied soldiers heard the <coughs> sound in the distance, they would be on their toes, because this was a very, very dangerous machine gun. 
The setup like this with the tripod also existed in reality. It was called the Lafette. And uh, a Lafette also had a scope to the side. And I can't really see that in this model. Um, I, uh, what I forgot to say about the bullets is that they had to be on the ground and uh, one of these guys would feed the bullets into the gun and make sure that the belt was fed in a constant tempo so the, um, uh, the gun would not jam. And one of the other two guys would uh, stand next to the gunner and spot. So he would uh, grab his binoculars and see where the bullets were landing. Uh, after every so many bullets there was a tracer bullet which was fired in the direction of uh, the target and the tracer bullets marked clearly where the bullets were landing so that the spotter could see if the machine gunner had to adjust his aim. Uh, you can see at the barrel of the gun that there are uh, there are some holes to the side and that's because the machine gun is air cooled and the barrel tended to overheat pretty fast and that means that the barrel had to be changed every five minutes or something like that if the gun was continuously firing um, therefore the uh, spotter or the ammo car carrying guy also had some spare barrels to walk around with um, so the fourth guy in this unit, well, he would just not be there. Um, the equipment is um, therefore a bit realistic in the sense that the ammo carrier would have these belts here, but the gunner would not and the spotter also would not because it's pretty uncomfortable. Um, okay. Um, this weapon was used for uh, suppression, of course, that's also what it's used for in-game. And uh, that concludes our story about the MG42. MG42 uh, was produced from 1942 onwards, so it first appeared in North Africa and then it was used on the Eastern Front extensively. Which brings us to our next unit. The Grenadiers. The Grenadiers that you can see here, they are uh, standing around a bit and they have a uh, Karabiner 98 Kurz, the K98K, which was the standard rifle for, um, for infantry in the German army. The Grenadiers that you can see here have uh, a pretty unrealistic uniform, unfortunately, because they are Wehrmacht and they should wear Feldgrau and uh, more like the uniforms of the Pioniere and the MG crew that we've seen before. But uh, instead these guys are wearing some sort of camouflage and the camouflage units in the German army were SS units. The Waffen SS used camo schemes like Zumftarn or Splintertarn and uh, they were spotted uniforms like these, not exactly like these but uh, kind of like these and, and the grenadiers uh, that we see here would actually wear uh, normal uh, camo, uh, plain green uniforms or brownish greyish um, we can also see a bag and a flask here, which is uh, part of the uh, regular out, uh, equipment of the Grenadier. And we can also see here the uh, Y-strap belt, which is typical for the German soldiers. Um, Grenadier, uh, they, their task was to fire rifle grenades and um, that's what they were called Grenadier for. So if we just make them fire this way, then you can see in the animation that the guy is putting his rifle on the ground and uh, all of a sudden a rifle grenade launcher appears on the rifle, which is, well, not very realistic because you had to screw it on. Um, but um, for gameplay purposes, this is a real fast way 
of launching the rifle grenade. Uh, like I said before, Grenadier Züge in uh, real life, the Kampfgruppen, had uh, uh, nine guys and um, the nine guys uh, would um, uh, mostly carry those K98Ks. Uh, uh, to be precise, six of them would carry the K98Ks and uh, two of them would have a Maschinen Pizzatole 40 and one of them would actually carry a light machine gun and the light machine gun that I'm gonna upgrade this squad uh, with now uh, is what the German Grenadier made famous. You can see here the light machine gun on this Grenadier uh, his K98K simply disappeared and um, it's the same gun as we could see on the Lafette uh, but before, but this one has a round magazine. Uh, this is not realistic per se. There were MG42s with a round magazine, but most round magazines were to be seen on the MG34, the uh, um, predecessor of the MG42. Um, we can still see the holes for the air cooling, and we can see it has a bipod and the bipod was used to um, make it fire on the ground and uh, let's demonstrate that for a bit uh, oh um, yeah actually I don't really know how to uh, make them fire at something here uh, so let's not do that um, the, um, the grenadiers they were uh, carrying these bipod MGs around and they uh, w would put it on uh, ledges, on walls, on window sills, and sometimes on each other's shoulder. So this guy would stand behind this guy and he would lay the MG42 over his shoulder. This guy would grab the bipod with his hands and you can actually see pictures where they are doing that. Uh, the Grenadier uh, were trained to uh, walk with uh, the rifle in one hand, especially when sprinting. But uh, in this game they just uh, hold the rifle with two hands, um, which is a bit of a shame because in this way you could uh, make the German army a bit more distinctive. The Grenadier are the backbone of the German army. Um, actually, these guys are not called Grenadier per se, that was only this one, the one who fired the rifle grenade, and the others are called Schützen. Okay, this brings us to the next unit in uh, the sniper. building, and that is the sniper, the Scharfschütze. The Scharfschütze uh, is wearing a cap here, he has a camo jacket with a uh, hoodie which is kind of realistic. He has a scoped rifle, which looks like a scoped K98K. No, it has this magazine uh, underneath, which um, which suggests that it's a uh, Gewehr 43, which is not uh, very uh, realistic per se, because um, snipers preferred the K98 for sniping duties. Um, snipers uh, could fire explosive rounds, as you can see here, and they actually existed, and uh, they were meant to fire into buildings, because then uh, the round would explode in the building and uh, cause so some pressure on the enemies occupying said building. And the sniper is a lonely unit, and that's also pretty realistic. Sometimes snipers were attached to uh, to Gruppen, but uh, that was uh, pretty rare. Um, they were uh, mostly directed by um, Kampfgruppe headquarters. Um, the cap he is wearing is the standard German army cap, Feldmütze. Uh, uh, which which is uh, also pretty common among other soldiers like uh, Volksgrenadiere and um, Volkssturm uh, Schützen 
Uh, whenever there were no helmets available, um, soldiers in the German army would wear this cap. It's also much more comfortable than to wear a helmet. Because as you might know, which brings us to the uh, next squad, the Granatwerfer squad, as you might know, the, the rim of the Stahlhelm was also resting in the neck of the soldier and especially in the Soviet winters the, um, this made the soldiers freeze a lot faster because the helmet would be uh, getting really cold and then the uh, German soldier would uh, have a chill down his spine. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the Granatwerfer squad. The Granatwerfer squad is The Granatwerfer squad is uh, consisting of four guys in game, which is not really realistic, l just like with the MG42 crew. Actually, it's with the MG42 crew, it would be three guys. And this guy is acting a bit like Superman, because he is carrying both the base plate and the tube, which is kind of superhuman, because they, these are both very heavy. And in reality, there would be two guys wearing one wearing the base plate and the other wearing the tube. Okay, let's set up, boys. Okay, set up, guys, I said. Okay, they just set up. As you can see, there's two guys next to the mortar now the Granatwerfer uh, 34. And, um,. It would be uh, a bit like the MG crew. Uh, there would be one guy uh, adjusting the aim with these wheels here. And this one there. This one is for uh, elevation. And this one is for direction. And uh, the cases they are wearing on their backs. Let's see if it says something. No. Um, the, those cases would contain the rockets for the Granatwerfer. Um, Granatwerfers were uh, sometimes attached to units, just like the snipers, but um, uh, usually they were in separate artillery units, uh, light artillery units. Um, there would be uh, the aim guy and the other guy would be the ammo guy. He would put in the rockets. The rockets are being put in with the nose up because the mortar is actually uh, working with the principle of uh, contact made and then the bottom of the rocket hits the bottom of the tube and then it ignites and is being sent on its way. The third guy, if there would be a third guy, um, would be the spotter, just like with the MG. Um, usually Granatwerfer teams were um, behind obstacles, so they uh, could look over the obstacle themselves, but they would be uh, mostly invisible to the enemy. And um, the other, uh, they would be, for example, in uh, in some sort of a dugout. Um, okay, well, that concludes our story about the Granatwerfer squad. And also, these are all the units that you can build in-game in the T1 building. Um, let's go to the infantry in uh, T2. Here. Um, if you just heard what he said, he said Schutzen here. He, of course, means Schutzen. Um, these guys are the Panzergrenadiere. And uh, what Grenadier about them is that they are carrying big bundled grenades. Um, this is not exactly um, realistic for Panzer Grenadier because this is more, and the bundled grenade is more uh, an equipment thing for Pioneer. You can see here that Panzer Grenadier are wearing a uniform which is a mix of Feldgrau and uh, camo. Um, so this uh, is sh this is suggesting that they might be Waffen-SS units. 
the fact that they are called Panzergrenadieren means that they are mechanized infantry. There's also mechanized infantry in the game in certain commanders, but um, that's including the vehicle that they are using. The Panzergrenadieren an sich, uh, they are just a unit which is being transported with Zonderkraftfahrzeuge uh, uh, like uh, the Hanomag or um, the or simply in trucks if there were no uh, Hanomags available. The Zonderkraftfahrzeug uh, uh, 251, which is the most common one in games, was actually not so common in real life. You can see that the, the, the main weapon of the Panzergrenadier is the Sturmgewehr 44. Um, and again, the number 44 is pointing at the year that they were start the starting production on this weapon. And this weapon made use of the uh, the 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 power that was put uh, used to put out the bullet was also recycled a bit to uh, make sure that the next bullet would be in the chamber already uh, ready to fire. Um, the Sturmgewehr 44 was uh, a common weapon in the last year of the war, and before that it uh, it was. Uh, very rare in 1944 and before 1944 it simply didn't exist. Um, what can we see on the equipment? Uh, there's a big belt here with uh, a, a buckle on it and the buckle uh, said God mit uns um, God with us and uh, that's because uh, even though the, uh, the government of Germany in the Second World War with the National Socialists was not so much into religion, uh, most common Germans were. So uh, they all, all believed that they were fighting with God, of course. And uh, well, um, uh, that's why they had that uh, on their um, belt buckles. Um, what we can see is that they also wear Stielhandgranaten uh, under their belts. Uh, here you can see Stielhandgranaten uh, 24, uh, which is a, a, an improvement of the Stielhandgranaten, which was already in use in the First World War. Um, then uh, we can see a canteen, which is uh, over the chest here, which seems pretty uncomfortable for to me and on the back side we can see binoculars and a rocket here and this rocket is because the the Panzergrenadiere were also being able to uh, to uh, to equip the Panzerschreck and the Panzerschreck is a bazooka-like weapon and uh, it was meant to destroy uh, enemy armor. So, um, yeah, it says it's meant to take out Ivan's tanks. Ivan, of course, being the nickname for the Russians. Um, whenever they uh, get the Panzerschreck, they... Um, they lose two Sturmgewehre and they get two Panzerschrecks in, in return. And that's also very unrealistic because a Panzerschreck was usually in only one... Uh, there was only one Panzerschreck in a, uh, in a unit um, in general. You can see the Panzerschreck is a large tube and it has an aiming device in front and it also has a shield. The shield is uh, to protect the soldier from uh, the blast which is uh, also coming out at the front. The biggest blast is the back blast which was super dangerous. If you would stand behind a soldier firing the Panzerschreck you could easily get killed uh, or burned very heavily. Um, then the last thing that we see here is a blanket 
and all soldiers uh, were using that in the field um, wha for whenever they were uh, in an encampment. So, this concludes our story about the Panzer Grenadiere. Let's go to the team weapon that you can build in T2. Okay, I just made it set up because the uh, well, it's if it's not set up, it's a bit useless. You can't fire, and it's also better for the description if it's set up. This is the Panzer Abwehrkanone 40, and is it's a 7.5 centimeter AT gun, and because this was this was the uh, successor of the Pac-38, uh, which was the successor of the Pac-35. The Pac-35 had a really small barrel and uh, it was only capable of killing light tanks. When the Germans were conquering France, they encountered the Char B-1 Bis, a very, very heavy tank, and they could only uh, destroy the tanks with large caliber guns like Flak 88 guns and with bombs from the Stukas, the Sturzkampf Flugzeuge, the dive bombers. And um, because that was a problem, uh, they uh, started producing these Pac 40 guns. Um, you can see here there's a crew of four, and just like with, well, you guessed it. Uh, in reality, there would be maybe three guys manning a gun or two. Um, the gun itself has a stabilizing shield here, which is realistic. It has a muzzle brake on the edge, also realistic. It has a shield to protect the, sh the soldiers from the blast, which was uh, exiting the um, barrel when the shell would leave the barrel and it has a firing mechanism which would go uh, back and forth while firing. Um, I don't know if it's visible on this model but it also had a scope. Maybe this is meant to be the scope. Um, the scope was uh, meant to make the gunner be able to see in the distance and uh, it would have a magnifying glass let's make it fire for a bit you can see that the reloading is done here and the shell leaves the exit uh, uh, at the end of the barrel it actually would be an empty shell of course What's funny here is that it's an empty shell in the air and when it falls on the ground it becomes a new shell. Wow, magic! And, and then the AT gun can fire again. You can see that the blast is pretty big so the soldiers have to uh, crouch behind this shield in order to not get burned or something. Um, the Pac-40 was a, a very powerful AT gun. It was the most powerful one in the Wehrmacht. Uh, in game, the Pac-40 usually needs two shots or more to kill a tank. In reality, the Pac-40 could disable a tank in one shot, but it all depended on uh, the angle in which they would hit it. Um, the Allied tanks were uh, of varying heights and, um, and shapes, of course. Um, British tanks were quite blocky, so they uh, would eat hits pretty easily. But the Soviets had uh, sloped armor on the T-34, so uh, that was um, a bit harder to hit because the sloped armor would deflect the shells from the Pac-40 uh, more often and that would mean uh, no damage at all. That's, uh, a shell would just bounce off the tank and fly into the air. 
Um, the uniform of the guys is pretty realistic. It's just the Feldgrau with, uh, and these guys are carrying machine and pistole. Uh, that is also a bit realistic. Uh, AT guns were usually used in batteries, so there were like a bunch of them in a row next to each other. And then they would uh, open fire uh, when tanks would approach. Um, they were often uh, um, used in choke points uh, or to cover the approach to a certain strategic location. Um, okay, so this is uh, the normal AT gun. Let's for uh, let's jump a bit to the big AT gun which we have here. This is the Puck 43. And this has the 88 millimeter bar barrel, and it is a very large gun. Um, in game, it's not mobile, and that's because of its weight. It was super heavy; it had to be towed with uh, rockets. Uh, rockets. It had to be towed with trucks. Um, you can see it fire here. Very large shells are being loaded in, and then, uh, just as with the Puck 40, it would uh, fire the shell. The empty shell would fall out, and actually, I didn't notice this before, but in this animation, the barrel is moving up and down a bit. Uh, as you might guess, this is not realistic. Um. You can see that there are wheels to adjust the aim, and uh, this is uh, this also has a big shield to protect the soldiers from the fumes, and uh, especially the blast which would come out of the barrel. The Puck 43 was pretty rare in the army. It was by far not as numerous as the Puck 40. And as you might know by now, the 43 means that it was only there in the second half of the war. Because production means that it starts in 1943. And um, let's say it starts in June. And then uh, before it hits the field, it would uh, take several months, uh, if not more, uh, before it saw any action. Um, yeah, from here it's a pretty easy jump to the artillery uh, guys here. Uh, this here is a Leichte uh, Feldhaubitze 18, uh, which suggests, and you're right if you think that, that this is a pretty old weapon. This is stemming from World War I era, and the artillery itself didn't develop so much between World War One and World War Two. Actually World War One saw uh, more development in static artillery than World War Two. World War Two saw more development in mobile artillery like the Panzerwerfer and the Katyusha and other platforms which could launch rockets uh, with vehicles. Um, the static artillery that we see here was uh, uh, the most common artillery in the Wehrmacht and um, the range was quite uh, the range was quite uh, impressive as you can see here I can also uh, I can almost cover the entire map and uh, if I fire here at these guys then they will uh, aim the gun that goes very fast in reality they would turn these wheels and the gun would go up pretty slowly and you can also see that there's a guy loading the shells and like with the AT guns an empty shell comes out it is here and a new one is being loaded right after um, because the artillery is always behind the lines, you can't, uh, as the artillery unit, you almost never can see your shells land. And that's what you need scouts for, or spotters, or just regular infantry units which are spotting for you. Um, 
they would tell you if um, the shots were hitting the target. And uh, if not, they would tell you if you were overshooting or undershooting or just missing in direction. Um, and then uh, the coordinates would be sent, the artillery table would be uh, adjusted and then the gun would be aimed accordingly. So uh, let's see if we can do that uh, for a bit and uh, let the gun fire at the furthest position on the map from here. So... Okay, they are gonna readjust the gun. This is impossible in real life that you can just lift it up with two guys. But the gun is aimed, the barrel is a bit higher than before because the shots have to go further and all the shells will go in a wide arc um, towards the target area. Okay. Yeah, well, this uh, this concludes our story about the artillery. Guys, you can stop firing. I'm totally satisfied with your performance. Okay, that brings us back to the uh, infantry, which is made for, uh, which is special infantry, call-in infantry, um, that you can only use if you have a certain commander Jaeger, equipped. Here we have the Jaeger squad. Like Hello, Jaegers. Uh, these Jaegers are equipped with uh, a sniper rifle, as you can see here, just like with the regular sniper. sniper. It's a Gewehr uh, 43, and they actually have three of those. The, uh, this one, this one, and this one have the Gewehr 43. The other two guys have the uh, K98K, just like the regular Grenadiere. Um, these guys also wear a mix of uh, Feldgrau and uh, Camo. And just as with the Panzergrenadiere, that's not very realistic. Um, the Jägerlite infantry are um, some sort of a scout unit. And uh, the scout unit, uh, like I said before, they, their task was to see uh, where enemy troop movements were. They also adjust could it help adjusting artillery fire and uh, and they also wear a rocket on their back like the Panzergrenadiere uh, which is a bit of a mismatch if you ask me because um, they don't uh, upgrade to Panzerschrecks ever. Um, we can also see that they have the binoculars, the blanket and the uh, big canteen in front. They also wear uh, grenades, but for them they are uh, smoke grenades. They are also Model 24s and the Stielhandgranate, which is a spelling error here, um, is uh, designed to be thrown very far, the stick, the stick grenade. Uh, because it has a stick, it's easier to throw, because uh, uh, throwing a stick is easier for most people than throwing a ball. And the stick also made it fly further away. So, um, Jaegers were uh, separate units. They were not in the uh, in a regular Zug or Gruppe, and they were uh, used independently. Which also goes for the stormtroopers that we can see here. And the stormtroopers are uh <coughs> the default equipment is uh, the K98K, as you can see here. So if you spawn them in, they will be equipped with those rifles. You can upgrade them with Panzerschrecks, like the Panzergrenadiere. And um, while uh, it's unrealistic for a unit to have two Panzerschrecks, they... Um, oh, they only get one. Uh, that's, that's more realistic then. And uh, that's uh, a nice nod to something which is realistic, because uh, uh, what you can see here are the stormtroopers. 
and the stormtroopers have a very special task in the German infantry. When they were invented, the, it was still World War I, and the stormtroopers were used to storm enemy trenches. Their task was to break through enemy fortifications, uh, throw a lot of grenades, and then uh, occupy the enemy trench. Um, therefore, the stormtroopers were heavily armored and also heavily armed with short range weaponry. And uh, that's a sort of represented by the MP40 package that you can give to the stormtroopers. They used to be able to upgrade to Sturmgewehr 44, but uh, they changed that to Maschinenpistole 40, uh, which are uh, for short range combat. The stormtroopers have a very special icon that you can see here, and the icon is actually for uh, another special unit in the German army called the Brandenburger Infanterie. So uh, the Brandenburger Infantry guys, they were uh, they were infiltration units, and that's what you can see here in the description. And uh, they uh, were the Brandenburgers consisted of Germans who had emigrated before, and uh, Volksdeutsche as they were called. So they were they had been living in America, in the Soviet Union, in other countries all around the world and they would return to Germany um, uh, because of the Heim ins Reich policy of Adolf Hitler the uh, become uh, come at home in the empire and uh, that was a call to all Germans around the world to uh, re-immigrate uh, uh, into Germany from uh, whichever country they were living in and this would mean um, uh, extra soldiers for the German army of course and extra workers in the factories um, the models are well almost the same as the Jaegers and the, um, uh, but the Brandenburgers had the, uh, a, a different task because they had experience in other countries they were used as some sort of uh, infiltration spy like commando like troops and they were speaking the language of the country they were operating in uh, fluently very often so they would not be noticeable um, they uh, dressed up as uh, foreign soldiers very often um, and that's why you have the mask in the in the uh, icon because it means that they disguise themselves and uh, they have the option to uh, camouflage which is uh, also a part of an, a nod to this task of the Brandenburger Infanterie. The um, uh, Brandenburgers uh, were not very famous, but they were the first German units in action in the actual World War II. Because, as you might know, World War II started with the attack on Poland and Hitler wanted to uh, make everybody believe that Poland started the aggression. Um, to make it uh, more believable, there were um, uh, prisoners taken out, they were uh, dressed up in German uniforms, they were uh, given a lethal injection, they were put on the board in the border area on the ground, and pictures were taken, and uh, that was a very early example of fake news because these were prisoners and they just were murdered for a media cause so that the Germans could say that the Polish had killed these German soldiers and that was the prerequisite to invade Poland. So the Brandenburgers uh, were very active in the beginning of the war. They were dissolved in the second half of the war and um, then they were just uh, merged with the Panzergrenadiere and that's why I said it was a nice nod uh, to that role uh, to see that the model is the same as the Panzergrenadiere because in the late war they, the stormtroopers or actually the Brandenburgers didn't exist anymore and they were merged with um, the Panzergrenadiere 
Okay, a few more units to go. Here we have the Assault Grenadiers. They look exactly like the regular Grenadiers, except they have a guy which is different than the others. So I assume that this is representing the NCO. Uh, the NCO, the non-commissioned officer, was uh, a Feldwebel in the German army. He was uh, tasked with um, giving direct orders to the unit in battle. I'm not going to talk about how they look, because I already did that with the normal grenadiers. But they, uh, the assault grenadiers, are all equipped with machine and pistole 40. And they, are, uh, all they can also sprint, which looks something like this. And here you can see that they carry the weapon in one hand, which I was referring to before. And that's kind of realistic, because that's how German soldiers were trained to run. And they also have an ability where they uh, throw a bunch of grenades. And uh, that's also realistic. It's a lot more realistic than only throwing one grenade. So uh, they all equip their grenades and they throw them away. And this is a very nice portrayal of how uh, the attacking grenadiers were supposed to act in battle. Yeah, as you can see in some footage of World War II, they run across a field, they throw themselves down on their bellies, they throw the grenades over an obstacle and uh, a, a, a high road, for example, and then they uh, continue to uh, cross that road in order to take some territory. Um, a little warning while watching World War II footage. Uh, not everything is real. Um, some footage is uh, made up and uh, is also uh, made for propaganda uh, purposes. Um, okay, then uh, on to the next unit, which are the Osttruppen. We can see here the Osttruppen. The Osttruppen are, uh, well, it's called Eastern Troops. And the Eastern Troops are actually not German troops, but they are in the German army. And the Osttruppen were uh, actually called the Ostlegion. And there were units in the German army that uh, were that consisted of uh, guys that were uh, living in other countries that were part of the Soviet Union. So like uh, Georgia or Ukraine or the Baltic States, they were um, uh, uh, put together in units which uh, spoke the same language and uh, they were also led by non-commissioned officers from their own country and uh, the Osttruppen would fight against the Soviet Union, mostly. Some Georgians were also sent to the Western Front. There's uh, uh, Some units were actually defending Normandy on D-Day, but since those uh, units were not really hell-bent on defending Germany, because it wasn't their real home country, they were uh, giving up uh, sooner than the more fanatic SS units or uh, regular Wehrmacht or Heer units. Um, the Osttruppen have a uh, pretty funny, uh, they have a pretty funny uh, voice line, like they call themselves Hilswillige, and that's pretty realistic because the, uh, they were also called Hilswillige by the Germans. Um, what a problem was for the most uh, Osttruppen was uh, that they were fighting against the Soviet Union and that would mean that they uh, could not be taken prisoner because they would of course be treated as, uh, as um, traitors to their uh, country. So therefore they uh, were would also uh, not want to be in the front line usually 
um, and uh, they are equipped with uh, K98Ks here and they almost uh, they were equipped with the worst weaponry the best weapons went to the wa Waffen SS units then the second best was uh, going to the Wehrmacht and uh, the worst weapons were uh, being handed out to the Osttruppen or the Ostlegionen and the most famous uh, commander of the Osttruppen was uh, Commander Vlasov and uh, what's actually quite nice about the Osttruppen is that they have the emblem here on their sleeves of the uniform and uh, that's um, that's very realistic because that's also the emblem that they were wearing in real life um, the the Osttruppen were uh, is a, some sort of a collective name for uh, people who were forced into service uh, and people who were uh, Hilswilige and uh, in 1942 this was uh, renamed into the Russian Liberation Army and uh, in Russian the abbreviation would be ROA and what's so very neat about this model is that above the symbol it actually says in Russian R-O-A and that's quite cool of course um, yeah so uh, General Vlasov was the uh, commanding officer of all these guys and they would uh, fight against the Soviet Union especially if they had been oppressed by uh, the regime of Stalin in the 30s um, uh, under the Great Terror or during the collectivization of uh, uh, the agricultural part of the economy because that led to a huge famine in Ukraine uh, and that meant that Ukrainians were uh, seeing the Germans somewhat as liberators not all Ukrainians of course but uh, a bunch of them at least well a bunch is, uh, is a bit too small to say there was a big part of the Ukrainian people that were actually thinking that they would finally be liberated of Stalin's regime and it's pretty uh, actually pretty logical of them to think that uh, in those days um, okay well uh, the Osttruppen are well one of the more interesting squads in uh, Company of Heroes 2 and actually I didn't know much about the Russian Liberation Army before I started playing this game and that's actually kind of cool so uh, even if the game is not uh, pretending to be uh, historically accurate you could still uh, learn something uh, that you didn't know about World War II um, the last unit that I'm going to talk about in this video officer is the reporting. officer unit and the officer unit and uh, we can see them here and here you can see a an officer as you could meet them in the Wehrmacht the other three guys are the three guys with the MP40 that have to be in the unit and this is the artillery officer and uh, this is a lieutenant colonel which is a kind of a high um, ranking officer in the Wehrmacht you can also see the red stripe on his trousers that all officers had in the Wehrmacht and he is uh, carrying a Luger um, pretty interesting is that this officer seems to be left handed um, that's not uh, I don't know if that's a nod to anything I don't think that most officers were left handed but uh, this guy is uh, carrying one of the most famous uh, German pistols uh, from World War II and uh, it's not the most common one that was the uh, Walter P. 38 um, but the Luger was kind of a legendary pistol and uh, as you might know from Band of Brothers uh, several Allied soldiers r were really after uh, a Luger as a souvenir uh, the artillery officer can uh, call in uh, mortar barrages as you can see here by this ability and uh, that was also uh, one of the tasks of uh, uh, officers in the field uh, the officer is wearing an officer's cap 
and uh, he is also having special straps on this shoulder and uh, designating his rank um, officers were of course a high value target for enemy snipers because uh, the officers would tell the troops what to do and uh, if they would be taken out then uh, someone else would have to take over like in most armies then a uh, next ranking officer would step in and uh, start uh, giving the orders um, because you had to rank up uh, in the army by uh, showing courage uh, and uh, doing service for several years most officers were older than the men they were leading so that's why they were a high value target as well because that would mean that uh, the next officer would not be as experienced as this guy above the chest pocket you can see some uh, some uh, uh, some metal thingies that he have has won and these insignia they were being uh, put on the uniform and they were representing the medals that they won because of course it's very impractical to walk around with a blinking set of medals in the field because not only would it be very noisy if you would walk around with those but it would also be a nice target for a sniper in the distance who could very easily aim at the blinking medals so um, this concludes our uh, video of the German infantry the next video will be about the German vehicles and uh, after that one is finished uh, I will talk about the other armies in Company of Heroes 2 so I hope you enjoyed it and maybe you learned something and as you might have seen there's more realism in Company of Heroes 2 than you might think as, uh, at first sight um, thanks for watching and have a nice day